a lot of Westerners underestimated Putin. Uh, I've known him for a long time. I think he's one of the most cold-blooded men I've ever met, and he'll do what's necessary to stay in power, and he's still in power. John Bolton, are you clear that the death of Alexei Navalny is a political assassination by Vladimir Putin? Well, I think it's very hard to believe that uh, that uh, somehow this uh, happened by natural causes or anything like that. As uh, they used to say during the Cold War, this is no coincidence, comrade. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, if this is borne out, and we're obviously waiting for more information, that it will be a sign that uh, Vladimir Putin thinks he's very much in charge and uh, uh, really not worried about the consequences domestically or internationally. Well, let's talk about the consequences, because, I mean, Putin has been condemned and sanctioned around the world, and yet he seems to be acting with impunity. What? How should the international community respond to this? Well, I, I think uh, the best way would be, certainly in the case of the United States, to get over the disputes we're having over military assistance to Ukraine and, uh, and, and get that resolved. But the fact is that the uh, uh, Russia in the past two years since the, the second invasion of Ukraine has unfortunately done a very good job of evading Western sanctions, which were not well designed, uh, particularly on the sale of Russian oil and gas, uh, and certainly not well enforced. Uh, mm -hmm. And he's gotten assistance from what I think is a new axis that's been developed with China, with satellites like Iran and North Korea. Uh, so certainly things have not gone entirely well for Putin over the past two years, but he still controls double the territory he controlled before the invasion. Uh, and I'm af very much afraid Western resolve is flagging. I'm mm -hmm. sure there'll be expressions of outrage over Navalny's death. Uh, the real question is whether there'll be anything more than expressions. Right. So action is is needed. And I suppose the best um, forum for that action is in the war in Ukraine. That That's your suggestion that really uh, you, the US and its European allies need to redouble their efforts now to ensure that Ukraine wins that war. Well, it'd be nice in the case of the United States, I'll just confine myself to that for, for the moment, to say something other than we want to defeat Russia. Uh, uh, it's it, That's not enough. It's uh, it, it, Preventing Russia from winning is one way of saying it, but the real objective should be to uh, repulse the invaders, uh, going back not just to two years ago, but going back to 2014. If you don't believe that uh, unprovoked aggression should be rewarded, then then the party that commits the aggression has to has to pay a price for it. And right now, the price that Russia is paying is well within their means, and the war continues. Mm. What are the consequences then, if if the U.S. and uh, you know, I know you're confining yourself to the U.S., but from from where we're sitting, Europe and the UK don't um, take the bull by the horns and and deal with this threat from Putin. Well, I think uh, Putin will take it as a further sign of Western weakness, and he would be he would be right to assess it that way. Uh, obviously, we're in the middle of a very difficult presidential campaign over here. Uh, I think uh, that's that's something Putin could take advantage of. And uh, whether it's in Ukraine or or pressure points elsewhere or just trying to wear down U.S., European, U.K. resolve, uh, mm. as he indicated recently in his interview with Tucker Carlson, he's floated the idea of uh, negotiations over Ukraine. He may think this is a point of maximum leverage for him to do that. Mm. What would you like to hear from Trump now, who may well win that presidential election you just alluded to, um, after this latest apparent atrocity by the Kremlin regime? Well, I doubt that he'll say much of anything. Uh, 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 really, what I'd like Trump to do is go away, but that's that's unfortunately not going to happen. I'd be very surprised, very surprised, if he issued any criticism of uh, his friend Vladimir Putin. Mm. And do you... I mean, obviously, Alexei Navalny's death is is the latest in a long line of critics of Putin who have met an untimely end. Um, do you have any hope of a sort of someone who is capable of standing up to Putin and and you know forging a future for Russia that is that is democratic? Well, I think we're a long way away from that. I mean, th this is this is a country really without an effective governmental structure, at least during the Cold War. Uh, when uh, Nikita Khrushchev, for example, 
uh, messed up the Bay of Pigs, uh, the uh, sorry, the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962, there was a Politburo that could say to Khrushchev, it's time for you to retire. There's nothing like that in Russia today. So any kind of change of government would have to be in effect by coup d'etat from the military or from the the intelligence services, uh, uh, the the Soloviki, the men of power, as they call them. And that's not necessarily uh, guaranteed to lead to a better uh, ruler from the West point of view. It's a, it's a very dangerous time, especially as China increases its influence uh, and control over, over Russia. Mm. And I just wanted to get your reflections on Alexei Navalny and his what he represented and how much of a threat he was to Putin. Well, I think uh, Putin saw him as enough of a threat to eliminate him. I mean, let's face it, he died in prison. And uh, the early explanations being given by Russian authorities are hardly uh, convincing. Uh, I'm not sure we'll ever know the truth until there's a, a new a new regime in, in Moscow that sees it in their interest to reveal it. Uh, but but that that seems to be what happens when you're an adversary of uh uh, of Putin, you can ask Prigozhin about that uh, just a few months before. So it it means, I think, uh, an indication that Putin feels in a strong position, feels he's in a strong enough position to eliminate one more opposition figure and get away with it. Mm. And and you know that the the picture you paint of Putin is that he is really at the peak of his powers, which seems extraordinary um, when you think how Prigozhin challenged him before his untimely death. Um, that's a moment of great danger for the world, isn't it? Well, I think it's always hard to know exactly what the state of play is in an authoritarian society where real information is hard to come by. But I also think uh, when looking back at the whole Prigozhin episode, a lot of Westerners underestimated Putin. Uh, I've known him for a long time. I think he's one of the most cold-blooded men I've ever met, and he'll do what's necessary to stay in power. And he's still in power. Mm, and will be for the foreseeable future. I think that's right. I there there there's a lot of opposition to Putin, uh, much of it among the the Russian diaspora, uh, and that that's their biggest problem. They're not in Russia. They're in in Europe or the United States criticizing, but it's not having any visible effect uh, in inside the country. And so finally, when you look back at all the warnings we've had over the years about Putin, whether that's, you know, his opponents who have been poisoned or the annexation of Crimea and where the international community didn't really stand up to him, how frustrated are you at those missed opportunities? Well, I think it's a it's a continuing indication of weakness in the West. And uh, uh, just speaking of American power, Donald Rumsfeld once said, it's not American strength that's provocative, it's American weakness. So when it's, whether it's Vladimir Putin or Xi Jinping or, or any other figure like that, if they see a West that's not prepared uh, to act uh, uh, strongly in its own interest, they will take advantage of it. So when Trump appears to undermine NATO, as he did in his recent comments, where, where how does that strike you? Well, I think it delighted Putin, I, and and I think uh, people should should understand this uh, threat of of uh, Trump withdrawing from NATO is very serious. Just within the past few days, Putin has basically said he would prefer to have Joe Biden reelected as president. That is a classic example of a Russian influence operation, because that's exactly the opposite of what Putin wants. <laughs> 